Hey Dreamers, this is Saki and welcome to a new series. A lot of you guys enjoying my tutorials always wanted something about animation. And while I'm good at animating camera paths or paintings, that's pretty much it. So I thought it would be great to get someone in the boat who's actually a pro at animation. And who would be better than the lead animator from my team at Ventum Games. So I want to welcome Chris to the series. Chris has been working and improving on his animation skills within Dreams for over a year. He's absolutely amazing and also running a YouTube channel where he uploads actively as well, mainly about animation. So please go and check him out, the link is in the description down below. What you see in the background is by the way also one of Chris's animation showcase. Now, in this episode, we want to teach you the basics of animation, including incredible tips and tricks to give you a start. While in the next episodes, we will be jumping into more specific topics like idle animations, custom runs, double jumps, dodge rolls, fighting animation, and a lot more. I hope you guys are as excited as me about this. For me personally, it will also be a journey of learning as well. So before I give it over to Chris, I want to introduce you a little bit to the tools that are available for animation. The most simple way of animation that everyone can just start with is the action recorder. The action recorder lets you record an action pretty much freehand while you're doing it. This is a quick and fun way to animate things, especially for beginners. In the tweak menu of the action recorder, we can also play around with different settings like the speed or in which way our animation should be happening. But that's not the only thing we can use it for. The action recorder also lets us record changes to settings that we make in the tweak menu. Here's an awesome little example on making changes to a spotlight which creates almost a disco-like feeling. Next we have paintings. Paintings have a pre-built way on how we can animate them. In the effects tab we can play around with all kinds of options like wave, flow or even hand drawn animation effects. With paintings we also have the frame by frame animation option as well as physical animation and more. I'll create a whole tutorial about animation of paintings and what's possible with them in the future for you guys. Next, we come to the most important tool for animation, which is timelines and keyframes. This is how we animate most of the things in a professional way and what Chris will dive into deeper. For those of you who haven't used any of it yet, a keyframe lets you make changes to something like the position of a camera. Once we connect those keyframes together, it will automatically create a path or animation between those keyframes. And this is how we create animation. More about that in a bit. In the animation section, we can also record sound for voice acting. And lastly, we also have a character possession tool. This works very similarly to the action recorder, but during the recording process, you possess a character that you can then walk or fly around with, or in our weird example, slide around with. I really hope that this gave you a bit of an overview of the tools that are available and how to start. Now, over to Chris. Get out a timeline and open it. I'm then going to go to the edge of the timeline and resize the canvas like so. 
After that, I'm going to zoom in on the timeline so I can have room to work. All right, now open the puppet menu and go to settings. Go to puppet behavior and turn off auto look. Then go to procedural animation and turn off all three buttons. All right, next we're going to get out a keyframe and place it at the beginning of the timeline. When you place it, you'll automatically go into edit mode. Also, be sure to scope into your puppet by pressing L1 and X. First, let me explain two different ways you can animate. FK or forwards kinematics is the least expensive way to animate in terms of gameplay thermo. You do this by holding L2. If you hold L2 and move the left stick, you'll rotate the puppet and also be able to move joints up and down. If you hold L2 and move the right stick, you'll be able to move joints up and down as well as left and right. Keep in mind that you can only move joints left, right, up, or down if they are rigged to move in those directions. For example, the forearm here can't move left or right. It can only move forwards and backwards. The other way to animate is using IK or inverse kinematics. This is the more expensive way to animate and should only be used when necessary. If you hold R2 and move your controller using motion controls, you will be able to pose your puppet. Doing this will cause some connected joints to move together. Take for instance, the hand. If I use R2 to animate it, the whole arm will move with the hand. If I just use L2, the on only the hand will move. The body part that can only use IK is the pelvis. You cannot use FK if you want to animate the pelvis. For this animation, I'm only going to use FK as it is cheaper and easier to work with. First, I'm going to animate the arms by the side. And I'm only going to bring them out just a tad. I'll exit edit mode and copy and paste this keyframe next to it, like so. Now press L1 and X over this keyframe to edit the next part. This time, I'm going to raise the arm a bit and lean the chest over to the left just a tad. What we're doing is anticipating the wave. We can't just go straight into the wave after standing still. It won't look appealing to the audience.
Once you're done, exit edit mode and hover your imp between the two keyframes. If you see a green area appear between the keyframes, this means you can blend the animations together. Holding L1 and pressing X in that green area will give you a blend type. If you keep pressing X while holding L1, you will cycle through different blend types. Each blend type affects your animation differently. The linear blend type is the smoothest one out of them all. Also note that you can open the keyframes and select a blend type at the top as well. Now copy the current keyframe and paste it right in front of the other one. I'm going to animate the arm extending out and then lean the chest to the right. I'll also move I'll also move the right arm out a bit. Now copy this keyframe and paste it. Animate the chest to lean to the left and bend the left arm. Make sure you bring the left arm in quite a bit. At this point, I'm going to select the last two keyframes. Oops, not yet. At this point, I'm going to select the last two keyframes, hover my imp over them, and hold L1 and press R2 to clone them. Now without releasing R2, move the keyframes over until they are even and press right on the directional pad to clone them a few times. We're doing this so we won't have to animate the wave animation all over again. After cloning them, go to the second keyframe on the timeline Copy it and paste it at the end. Now go back to the beginning of the timeline, copy the first keyframe and paste it at the end like so. The animation appears to be too fast. To change this, open the timeline and change the playback speed. I'm going to set it at 20, but you can choose whatever floats your boat. Now you have created a successful wave animation in Dreams. Here are a few more examples that Chris prepared for you guys. And that's pretty much it for the first episode. If you guys enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give the video a like, some feedback, and definitely make sure to share it with others so they can learn how to animate as well. You can now also comment down below on what you're interested in learning next, Huge shout out to Chris for doing an amazing job, so don't forget to head over to his channel and leave a sub there too. I'll see you guys in the next video.